Hello class, this is session 26 on Holy Communion and boy is this strange. Here we are going to talk about coming together in union and yet you're going to do this in uh, somewhat of an isolation because we are not having class on this April the 11th. So Holy Communion is all about getting together, hearing the story and remembering God reached down and saved us through his son Jesus Christ our Lord. No getting together to discuss that at this time. For being so central to the Christian faith, Holy Communion has a bit of an identity crisis. It's an act of remembering Jesus, the person, a magical meal. Sometimes we're not even sure what to call it. Is it called the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, the Holy Communion, the Sacrament of the Altar? It's all very messy just like a great dinner. Like Holy Baptism, Holy Communion is a sacrament, earthly elements used according to God's command and connected with God's Word. Because Jesus truly pre is truly present in the elements of bread and wine, we believe this sacrament is effective in giving us the things Jesus promised, namely forgiveness, life, and salvation. I'd like you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 to 25. In this, Jesus commanded his disciples to take and eat and drink the bread and wine and to do this in remembrance of me. But the sacrament of Holy Communion is not just a way of remembering Jesus. If that were the case, it would be something we do, a work, but it's really something God does. Instead, when we come together in what can well be described as communion, that is, fellowship or community, we're uniting as the body of Christ to recall and receive God's promises to us. A good, albeit necessarily incomplete, understanding of communion comes from that distinction. God is the one at work in communion, not us. We're not sacrificing Jesus again every time we share the meal. We're not doing hocus pocus turning the bread into flesh. Instead, God in Christ has already done what we cannot do for ourselves. God is already present in, with, and under the elements of bread and wine. While the identity crisis of Holy Communion can lead us to more questions than we started with, such as how to distribute the sacraments or who gets it, the place to which we return is simple even in its complexity. This is the body and blood of Christ. This meal is for you. Do this and remember. We take communion regularly because Jesus commanded us to in 1 Corinthians. If Jesus lived down the street from us, we would rush to hear his words every single day. In the same way, we return to the table over and over, week after week, not because we have to, but because we get to. God knows we need the life that's received in communion with our neighbors, and that's why we're called to fill the need on a regular basis. It's bread and wine, but it's not just bread and wine. It might seem weird for our modern minds to trust that Jesus is really present in the elements, but this was a big deal for Martin Luther. Luther said the elements are surrounded by God's word and bound up in it so that Christ is in with and under the elements. The simplest way to put it, God is here. It's not by sleight of hand, and it's not play acting. When we hear, this is the body of Christ, this is the blood of Christ given for you, that's exactly what we're talking about. Rules matter, but not as much as Jesus' promises. Churches, even Lutheran churches, struggle over the hows of Eucharist. Do I hold my hands like this? How does the community of faith decide who should receive the sacrament? Am I taking this seriously enough? The truth is this stuff matters. It's good to get it, to take it seriously, but it's better to remember that forgiveness is a gift freely given out of God's grace. So while we might do communion differently than the church down the street, and are convinced that our way is the only way to do it, let's not make the things that don't matter matter. And let's not let the things that don't matter 
separate us. Well, Luther's small catechism has a section on the sacrament of the altar as well. Find it and follow along. What is the sacrament of the altar, Martin asks? Instituted by Jesus Christ himself, it is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine given to us Christians to eat and drink. Where is this written? The holy evangelists Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and also St. Paul write thus, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he also took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. What is the benefit of such eating and drinking? We are told in the words, for you and for the forgiveness of sins, by these words, the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation are given to us in the sacrament. For where there is forgiveness of sin, there are also life and salvation. How can bodily eating and drinking produce such great effects, asks Martin. The eating and drinking do not in themselves produce them, but the words for you and for the forgiveness of sins. These words, when accompanied by the bodily eating and drinking, are the chief thing in the sacrament. And he who believes these words has what they say and declare, the forgiveness of sins. Who then receives this sacrament worthily? Fasting and bodily preparation are good external discipline, but he is truly worthy and well prepared who believes these words for you and for the forgiveness of sin. On the other hand, he who does not believe these words or doubts them is unworthy and unprepared, for the words for you require truly believing hearts. So here are the essay questions for you this week. Please write 150 of your own words per each assignment below. And uh, there are two questions. Read Luke chapter 22, verses 14 to 20. The four things that Jesus does here, taking food, blessing it, breaking it, and giving it away, show up at other places in Jesus' story too, such as in the feeding of the 5,000, revealing himself to the disciples. Why do you think Jesus broke the bread? How does the meaning change when you think of the bread as Jesus' body? Number two, read 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 29. Paul wrote that we are supposed to prepare ourselves for the reception of Holy Communion and that to fail to do so is to drink judgment against themselves. How can we prepare ourselves to come to Holy Communion? What do you suppose Paul meant by drink judgment against themselves? Will this change your attitude about taking Holy Communion? And then I'd like you to answer two of the following uh, six questions. Two of the following six. Is breaking generally a good thing or a bad thing? Why? What things do you share with other people by breaking them apart? Why is this good or necessary? The next question. When you take something apart and eat it, like a cow becomes a burger or a banana is peeled to get to the fruit inside, with a thankful heart, does it go away? Or does it become energy to help you grow, work, and play? How is this like Jesus in Holy Communion? Next question. Luther does, Lutherans do not take Holy Communion by ourselves. Why do you suppose that is? Next question. Lutherans come forward and gather around the altar, or at least face the altar, to receive Holy Communion. Other Christian traditions pass the communion out to the people in the pews. Why do you suppose Lutherans do it the way we do? Next question. Typically, only the ordained clergy, the pastor, presided Holy Communion. Why do you suppose that is? And finally, 
even among Lutheran churches, who is allowed to take Holy Communion is different. Why do you suppose that is? So you needed to answer two of those last ones. And then finally answer both of these questions. What do you consider the best part of receiving Holy Communion? Go ahead, just tell me what it is. And finally, what do you do during Holy Communion? Are there ritual words you say or think as you take the elements? And where did you get those? Did you hear them from your parents, from your pastor, from other people? Let me know. All right, God bless you. I wish we could have done this class together. We'll talk more. Have a great week. Bye-bye.